Hey guys, it's Bub here. In this video, we're taking a look at a viewer recommended operating system. This is Meringue 10 Superlight Core. From what I can tell, this is based off of Windows 10 22H2, so it is two years old at this point. Um, and like I said, one of my viewers has recommended this to me in the comments quite a bit recently, so I'm eager to take a look at it and see what this is like. The first thing I've noticed straight off the bat is that their website to actually download this is a WordPress site or something along those lines, and it was actually really it wasn't very user intuitive to get to the download link. It was very, in my opinion, messy. So that was just already one negative. But again, we're gonna go ahead and look at the OS, not the actual website. So from this ISO setup, we can see it looks traditional Windows 10. I don't have a product key. And their website actually had quite a few versions. Like there's a Windows 11 version. There was a regular Windows 10 Meringue OS version, but we picked the core version because I'm used to taking a look at like tiny OSs, like tiny 11, tiny 10. So I wanted something that was really comparable to that. So we're now installing this ISO and I will be back once we get into the desktop so we can properly assess this supposed tiny operating system. All right, and here we are in the desktop of Meringue OS. The only thing I did was I went ahead and installed VMware tools, but that shouldn't take up too much RAM, CPU, or disk space. The first thing is that I really do like this wallpaper. It's sort of a whitish blue theme. I don't think this is any official Windows OS wallpaper. I think this is more of a custom wallpaper. Do we get any other options? We can't change it because we don't have activated windows, but there are a few others that we could choose from any one of these four plus the Windows 10 default wallpaper. So on the desktop, in the more center of the desktop for some reason, probably some level of scaling issue it should probably go up there, we have the Meringue menu which includes browser installers, CPU installer, driver installer, never install either of those. Those are just complete bloatware. Um, various Meringue OS wallpapers. Um, interesting to say the least. Uh, I feel like these are all AI generated based on like that and that. Like these are most definitely AI generated wallpapers. Um, anyways, moving on from that, we have online, which is empty. We have other, which is also empty. Search, which is everything. I don't even know what this is. I don't want to know what that is. Uh, start all back, which also has the Roblox player installer inside of it for some reason. Um, this is certainly shaping up to be an interesting operating system. And then we have a theme pack called Meringue OS that we're not going to open for the sake of time here. I don't know what that is. Then further on the desktop, we have YouTube one for, I'm assuming that's, yeah, that's the developer. We have the Meringue OS YouTube channel, the Meringue OS Discord, and a shortcut to Microsoft Edge that does not exist because Microsoft Edge is not installed on our system. Down on the taskbar on the right side, we have our Show Desktop button. We have our Action Center. We have our Standard Volume, our Network, as well as our Meet Now button. We then have our System Tray there. On the left side, we have our File Explorer, we have Action Center, we have our search bar, and then the Start menu, which is actually condensed compared to what we typically see in Windows 10. All right, in the Start menu, we do have Microsoft Edge that doesn't actually open. I'm assuming it's because Edge isn't actually, yep, it's not actually installed. They took it out. We then have OneDrive, which does appear to actually be installed for some reason. So we kept OneDrive, but not Edge. That is certainly an interesting, yep, OneDrive is still installed. Wow. Moving down, we have the Photos application. Yep, standard Windows application. Settings, uh, here we can see it's not activated. We didn't get an out-of-box experience. We just brought straight into a local admin account that it created. Um, and we can see this is Windows 10 Pro version 22H2, just as I suspected. And this build was compiled on March 22nd, 2025. Um, so it's relatively new here. Then have our typical Windows accessories, character map, notepad, paint, quick assist, I don't see it kept in a lot of custom Windows ISOs, so I guess in a way I am kind of glad they kept it, but I don't see a point in it if it's not a managed device. RDP, Snipping Tool, Windows Fax and Scan. We have our typical administrative tools, nothing too out of the ordinary here. Windows Ease of Access, PowerShell, Windows Security, so I am glad they kept that in. As a big security guy, I love seeing that they kept this in, except the fact that it doesn't actually appear to be doing anything. Um, it's just really a scam because security isn't running. And then we have Windows System, so Control Panel, File Explorer, Run, Task Manager, this PC, and Administrative Tools. 
let's go ahead into Windows Update. So we click Update and Security. It does appear like Windows Update is just completely missing, completely gone from settings. So I was going to come in and see if it would actually run updates, but it appears like they're just not even here. So that is certainly one way to approach it. Let's take a look in the task manager here and take a look at CPU and disk utilization because this is supposed to be a lightweight operating system. So CPU is doing its typical Windows thing, 4%, 1%, typical Windows. As for memory, at idle, we are using 800 megabytes out of 2 gigabytes. Um, so not bad. I mean, typical. We, we've been able to get Windows 10 down to, I believe, like 176 megabytes. We did that a few years ago, um, but not bad for Windows 10. And then in terms of storage, we are, yeah, not doing too great. So compared to a regular Windows 10 or Windows 11 install, this is great. But compared to what we see with like Tiny 10, Tiny 11, 9.15 gigabytes used is not good at all. We can see Tiny 10 and Tiny 11 get down to the 3 gigabytes. So not that great. So with that being said, this is a brief overview of Marang OS 10 Superlight Core, which also is a really long name. If you like this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe for new around here as we do all kinds of technology videos, including device restorations. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any other operating systems you'd like for me to check out, as I will most likely take a look at them. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.